Alright, we're back here for round one. I will be on the play. And I don't want a mulligan in this map. It's a great hand. Good to have Terra open on turn two, Vultrox also on turn three. Goblin Replica if I need it. Essence Drain. Yeah, just strong hand. Arcbound Worker is mildly annoying. But as long as I don't have a two drop, I will kill it without any consequences. Let us see. And if it's a Mur, I'll kill the Mur. They're getting in for one damage. I suppose they are. We'll take it. And Arcbound Ravager. That is annoying. Well, we have Goblin Replica, so all we have to do is make sure that every single creature my opponent has dies. Um, so, we ping Arcbound Worker, they sack it to Ravager. We ping Ravager, they sack. Oh, can't work out a Ravager. This is very annoying. Well, we're probably going to have to just ping Ravager. That is a very annoying turn 1, turn 2 play. Very hard to interact with. But I kind of want them to load all up on one guy before I play my Goblin Replica. Um, while ping Arcbound Ravager now, they will move Arcbound Worker over. Yep. Then I can play Goblin Replica and have Essence Drain. So, at least I have a lot of removal here. Terra is looking pretty bad at the moment. Yep, I take three. Ping, pinging there might have been a bad idea. Um, now I get to play Vulshock Sorcerer again. And kill Battered Golem when it comes around to their turn again. To make Arcbound Ramager a 4-4. Unless they decide to sack Ravager, which would also be acceptable, which would mean they'd have a 6-5 that sometimes doesn't untap. Still got this Goblin Replica waiting in the wings. Still got Essence Train. It's all fine at the moment. Let's see what our opponent does. They have another artifact that'll be annoying. Once we finally do kill this Ravager, we'll be in a strong position because they've wasted so many resources keeping it alive. Um, just thinking what they could even be playing here. Not really sure. Trinket Mage. If they have an artifact land, that's annoying. But if it's just like another artifact that costs mana, then that's alright. Arcbound Worker would be annoying actually. Or oh, Artifact Land. There we go. Tree of Tails. Makes their Ravager very big. Are they gonna play it? Seems like they're going a bit slow. But we're definitely connected. Um, yep, they can attack. Absolutely killing the Battered Golem, if I get the opportunity. Yep. So they will sacrifice one of their artifacts. There's reasons to sacrifice either one. Um, depends if they have more artifacts in hand or not. Yeah, I'm not surprised, so I'll take four. Throwing land here would be alright. 
means we get to kill Ockbound Ravager and gain 3 life. We don't draw land, just play Goblin Replica and pass back. We can kill the Trinket Mage after that. Take 4 here. Um, yeah. <laughs> Don't know what else to say about that. Kind of an unexciting moment. Moments like these are doing commentary is a little bit tricky for. It's just not much happening on the board. When it's taking the time to think things through. Especially when you're unfamiliar with the format, you can't really talk about what all the cards are too easily. They're not even playing Tree of Tales. Hmm. I guess that's not unreasonable. They want to get their serum pushing off. Leaden Myrrh. I think I still want to play Goblin Replica here. Although, if I play Leaden Myrrh, I can get Essence Drain next turn. If I draw a land, I have Murderous Spoils up too. Uh, no, I think I'll still go Goblin Replica. And pass the turn back. Ultra Oxalter is so good. So if our opponent attacks without even playing a land, without playing Tree of Tales or another artifact, then I can even block with Goblin Replica and ping twice with Ultra Oxalterer. But I don't feel like that's going to happen. Just have to see what they do. Ultra Oxalter is so good. Hmm. Okay. Um. Do I want to block with Goblin Replica here? It's tricky. If I can take 4 and go to 8, kill Trinket Mage. Or I can block Arcbound Ravager, go to 10. Kill that. I can even play a land, that's really weird. I'm not sure if they're misplaying or not. I'll just let them go and ping this twice. I don't want to lose my goblin replica to something like a galvanic key. Just getting flashed in. That said, I'm also not unhappy if they do flash in an artifact and sacrifice it. Have to hug non creature artifact. Yeah, weird. Very weird. Um, so here, my five mana. Um, just thinking about what my options are. I can attack with Goblin Replica, but I don't really think I need to. I think they think they can tap down Goblin Replica of Blink Moth well, but it's very specifically non-creature artifact. It'd be a bit strong if it could tap the creatures. Yeah, they're a bit confused. <laughs> I'll just let them know, because they seemed really confused. Um, does that mean I want to attack with Goblin Replica now? This is our opponent. Um, no, I'm pretty sure I still want to just keep back as a blocker. I'll block the Arcbound Ravager and then try and destroy it. Yeah, there's a lot of confusing cards in this set. because it's around a time where they hadn't quite stopped wording things in weird ways or making things slightly unintuitive. Most of the cards are fairly straightforward, but there are some things which are just like, why does it work that way? Shouldn't it work a different way? I would like to steal an equipment with murderous spoils, that'd be pretty nice. They thought of a non artifact creature. Hmm. 
Yeah. So they played. Uh, why aren't they playing Tree of Tales? I'm really confused. They have a Tree of Tales in their hand. They search for it with Trinket Mage. Let's Arcbound Ravager be bigger, but. I mean, at this point it's a bit irrelevant since I have Goblin Replica, but. Before it, it would have actually been worthwhile to play and sacrifice it. I don't even know. Yeah, they must be thinking about something. They have three cards in hand and a tree of tails. Now our opponent's lost connection. <laughs> Alright. Um not sure if they disconnected or they rage quit. Hmm. That's a bit annoying. So, what to do? What to do in the meantime? <laughs> While we wait to see if our opponent is coming back or not. I imagine they would be, right? Um. if I can get some Paul Brune or something. Uh, my friend's not online. Um, tell you what I'm actually going to do. I mean, feel free to skip ahead if you get a bit bored watching. But I'm going to play some Hearthstone in the meantime. Because it's, it's a fairly fast game, so I can play like a five minute game of that and come back and see if our opponent's game connection again. But yeah, I don't really want to like start some match in the casual room, like Pulpa or a modern or something. Especially the only modern deck I've got a match online right now is um another friend's birthing pod list with Deathrite Shamans, and I don't really want to be playing modern with Deathrite Shaman after the ban list announcement. Seems a bit silly. All right, so here is some Hearthstone. Once it loads up. For those who haven't played Hearthstone yet, the beta is now open. But anyone can make an account. Well, I wouldn't recommend it crazily. It's enjoyable. It's kind of like an arcade card game almost. Free to play. Although you can pay money for it. Reason being that my favourite game mode and a lot of people's favourite game mode is the arena. Um, got no current quests, that's a bit underwhelming. But I will play. And in the arena it's basically draft. Play with the shaman deck. You got nine different classes, each of them have a unique ability and different cards available to them. Basically like you've got nine colours, but each colour also has a Ability they can use at any time for two mana. There's a different effect. One class for two mana just deals one damage to any target. Another class for two mana just gets a one one creature. Another class for two mana draws a card and you lose two life. And this class is the Shaman, which for two mana gives you a random totem creature. And the totems can be you can get a one one. You can get a 0-2 that has to be attacked. This game, instead of attacking and blocking, you select your target and attack that target. So you can often basically annoy your, ignore your opponent's creatures and just attack them directly. Which is why these creatures with Taunt are very good, because they have to be attacked if they're on the field. I'll get rid of that card. You have three cards to start with. What? And you mulligan, basically have a look at your hand, select the cards you don't want and mulligan those. It's basically like a commander mulligan, the French mulligan. Well, greater. This card's always so annoying because it always kills my 1-2 taunt guy. There's a 2-2 two, two taunt, but I will use my ability. You can use your ability once a turn. I've got another taunt guy. That's not bad. Taunt creatures are just good, you get a few of them on the board and you're pretty safe for a while. Certainly better than just gaining life blindly. 
My opponent has a lot more cards in hand than me right now because they have a card that's called the coin. So you can remove that to get an extra mana. Basically a ritual. So they're picking this and then they're probably going to trade their 1 1 with it. No? Okay, that's kind of weird. They could have dealt 1 damage to me. They chose not to. I'm okay with that. Um. Do we want to play here? I think I'll let's just play another totem. Let's just kind of check. Oh, our opponent's back. Okay. So, there's a brief introduction to this game. You can kind of see how it goes. There's a lot of different abilities. Battle cries when it comes into play. The cost in the top left corner. You get one mana every turn regardless. And I'm going to quit. Probably could have said sorry there, but I didn't. Alright. They're beginning of combat step. They are back in the game. I will definitely destroy that. Um, lock it first. Just in case they have some way to prevent it from getting destroyed, I don't know. And smash. Does this resolve? It does. There's no targets to put the counters on. That's module that should work. And you may, you may, them. If all this is, you have to, then having played Lindmer before would have been pretty good because that would be a 5 5. Let's see what they play. So now can Ori, that is fine by me. So now they can play things at instant speed. But they don't have much mana at the moment, so... Yeah, this card really doesn't do much. I would not recommend playing it. Seems like our opponent's sort of a bit unfamiliar with the format. Not that they're entirely unsure of what they're doing, just... They're playing some slightly questionable cards that don't necessarily have that much impact. So, we've got four 1-1s. One we have our game plan. Let's see what our opponent does. Legworm armor is fine. They have to play a creature that survives our Vulshock Sorceress and have time to equip to it. So they can play things at instant speed, but they can't equip at instant speed. And we are about to have a lot of removal up. Magma Giant, eh? Yes. Yep, that's annoying. So they got the Magma Giant. I will play Cranial Plating, offer them the opportunity to waste mana on a Sagworm Harbor. And then I will Terror the Magma Giant. What's the good thing about Sagworm Armor? I get to steal it soon. Yeah, let's just kill it now. Don't particularly want to take a whole lot of damage. So that was annoying. Land. Now we have to find another way to kill our opponent. Now we know they have Magma Giant, we won't necessarily commit all our guys to the board so readily. Moriok Scavenger is good. Pretty good draw actually. Probably should have kept up double black, but not hugely relevant. Serum Vision, sure. Maybe they're trying to take for a counter spell. Um, yeah. Pretty happy I've got more scavengers. I'll get that Goblin Replica. If I really want to, I can kill with an Ori, but I don't think I do. I do wish to use this ability though. And equip to here. Pass the turn. They're doing stuff at sorcery speed? Awesome. Or maybe they're not. Okay, so I have a swamp. Now, let's see. Um, yeah, play Goblin Replica. Give me a 4 3. The likelihood of them actually having a creature with more than 4 toughness is pretty low. So I'll just attack.
That's an equipment. And that's all. Okay. So this murderous spoils is picking up some value. Once they actually play a creature and equip all their stuff to it, I get to take all their stuff. That'll be sweet. Until then, keep up Essence Drain, Goblin Replica, all these effects. Although, I also just get to kill my opponent here if they don't have anything. More equipment, alright. I mean, equipment's good, but I think they're overvaluing a lot of the equipment. Warshog Morningstar's definitely good, but the other ones are a bit questionable. And Essence Drain. See if this kills them. I certainly hope so. Yep. Okay, so we go to game two. Definitely want Echoing Ruin. They have a lot of artifacts. Um, anything else? Wall of Blood's not the worst. With them. They've got that stupid 5-5 five five that deals 2 damage to everything. It's kind of annoying. Could bring in Wall of Blood against that. What would we maybe want to cut in against this deck? Um, not sure, really. Not sure we even want Wall of Blood, really. And could cut just like a random 4-drop, maybe? Do we want to cut any non-artifacts? Because it makes our Moriarch Scavenger better if we have more artifact creatures. Um, Nim Devourer is actually fine. I'd like to keep that. Could cut. Yeah, I'll just cut him a quadrupod. And submit. Do I want to play the Volta Whispers? Mm, no. I'm fine with playing swamps. Oh wait, we have cranial plating. I do want to play Volta Whispers. I was wrong. Sorry guys. Yeah, I should be playing Volta Whispers in this deck for sure. I have two things that care about artifacts. And cranial plating is a very re relevant one. Like if this was uh, Volta Whispers right now, it'd be pretty good. I would not like to mulligan though. If I draw a black source, I'm in a pretty good spot. Yeah, equipment is fine by me. Play Swamp, not that it matters too much which one I play. Okay, play Mountain, play Mask of Memory. That's the one I'd like to hit with first, Cranial Blading, I'd like to kill them with. Play Swamp, play Emissary of Despair. Pretty happy they played that Sagbone Mama now. Especially with Sagbone Mama, you can just play this the turn that you equip it. You've got three mana to equip it already, you just... Unless you've got like two drop that you want to equip it to. Oh, well, that's kind of a combo. Kind of. Not that good because I can just shatter it in response. And it also costs like a million mana. I'm actually just going to play Cranial Plating here because they won't have enough mana to equip and to swap. If they did, I might keep it up because I wouldn't want to take seven damage. So ten damage actually. Does ten damage those two cards together? But this is also a bunch of damage. Six to them, I draw two, and I discard one. I do wish to use this ability. And now I get to discard a card. Might just be Nim Devourer. I think the rest of my hands is removal. Yeah. And that's the only one I can actually get back. Uh, I'm really feeling pretty comfortable here. If my opponent doesn't have a removal spell, this game's pretty close to being over. Yep, I can take one damage here. Okay. Um, that's five mana, so I can't actually play it here. Let's just attack again. Would not mind drawing a land. Pretty happy to discard Oxidar Nolan here. No crazy use for it at the moment. Alright. Always yield. I do wish to use. Don't want Oxidar Golem. Play a swamp. And. Pass the turn. 
I want to shatter that Merv Quadrapod in response to there and activate it. Or I might just Magma Jet it actually, because that works too. Oh, my opponent just conceded. Even though they weren't dead. Okay. But that's fine with me. I mean, they were actually dead. But they didn't know that. Alright. So, that's the end of round one. Everyone else has finished their games.